This episode, I thought I'd talk about one of my, well, actually my favorite Husker piece of paraphernalia, really piece of legend, if you will. It's Milt Tenniper's book, The Assembly Line. And this book was uh, given to me by Ryan Tweedy, who made the Husker film Through These Gates. And it's autographed by Milt Tenniper, and it says, John... To a healthy recovery in football, Milt Tenniper. Uh, Ryan gave it to me after I'd had my heart attack in 2015. But this book is pretty amazing in its own right. It is Milt Tenniper basically describing uh, the off offensive line technique that he used in the I formation under Coach Osborne from... He coached from 1974 to 2002. And during that time, I, that obviously was a legendary time in Husker football. Uh, he coached 16 All-Americans. He coached five Outland Trophy winners, including Wheel Shields and Zach Wiegert. The 1995 team is widely regarded as the best team in college football history, not just Nebraska football history. But when you look at what happened... Between 1994 and 1995, with the offensive line very specifically, it was nothing short of legendary level coaching. Because four offensive linemen graduated from 1994, and I mean, you replace that many linemen, and you think that, okay, we're going to have some, you know, drop off. Uh, no, they did not have any drop off. They had zero sacks given up and 243 passing attempts. Obviously, Nebraska didn't pass a whole lot, and our quarterbacks were pretty mobile, but still, that's pretty phenomenal. Uh, I think they had three procedure calls the entire season and one holding penalty. That's Can you just imagine what that would be like now? We'd be just going in cr crazy with that kind of offensive line. But this book, this book, I, you know... The contents, reflections on my coaching career at Nebraska, motivation and evaluation, uh, offensive approach and practice routine, run blocking progression and rule blocking. And then we get into inside zone, outside zone, option football, the trap game, the counter game, the isolation game, reverses, shovel passes, passing. I mean, it's this thing is basically, I, you know, this could teach you, I, if you're a football coach, and I am not a football coach, uh, how to block uh, uh, the, well, for the I formation. And I would guess maybe at the high school football level, that would be very beneficial to a lot of coaches out there. And I say the high school level because, you know, we're constantly at Nebraska. This there's this constant feed underneath this, you know, this undercurrent of we need to bring back the fullback and we need to run the triple option because those things made us successful. I think one of the things that you realize when you're reading through this book is how much evolution takes place. Again, as not a football coach, I looked read through it as for kind of how did. How did was their philosophy? What how did they approach the game and how did they do this? And I looked at it and I guess one of the things that sticks out is that they're constantly changing things. You know, he points out in 1988 they changed changed to zone blocking and they actually became more effective in the running game. More effective in the running game after 1988, which is pretty phenomenal to think about. Because in the 1980s, I mean, it wasn't like they were bad because they run rushing title after rushing title after. In fact, every year you'd be like, we won the rushing title. OK, we didn't run the rushing title. We'd be very upset about it. At least I was I'm a little bit of a nutball, maybe on that. He talks about how their, for example, their counterplays evolved over time, which which players pulled. If they pull the backside tackle and guard, they pulled the backside tackle. But it evolved because defenses would figure out how to stop it, and then they'd change it up. There's this constant evolution. It wasn't just because we had a fullback, and it wasn't just because we were running a triple option that we won football games. Uh, you read the trap play section, and I guess what when you read that section or that chapter, it, it, what sticks out to me 
is how the offensive line had to work very closely together to make those plays work the way they worked. Uh, for example, uh, the way that the the guards move or the center moves, if they're too low or they're too high, you know, they're letting the linebacker escape across and filling the trap hole and blowing up the play. Uh, it's pretty easy for us to sit on our couch at home and kind of honestly look at football and just say, well, the offensive line just needs to hit somebody. When the fact is, and it makes it's pretty plain by reading this book, that it's pretty technical. I mean, it's pretty, from what I understand from talking to other football coaches, is that Tenniper's schemes in this book, or at least how he outlines them, aren't even that, uh, they're not even that complex compared to some of the schemes people run. So, I mean, I couldn't understand them, but I'm just some schmo. And how precise the execution has to be and how they practice the same things over and over and over. And again, like their practice routine, how they did this stuff so that they were ready when it came to game time. I'll include this quote. I, I tend to say book quotes and I pull out like one or two quotes from every book I read. And I keep those so I kind of remember the context of the book. And the one I found about Tenniper's book is this one about experience. Most young men aspire to be the best, but many don't realize what it takes to get there. This is where the older players become an influence. Their work habits and dedication to excel tend to rub off on the aspiring young players. And I think that's, that's really key because when you look at, for example, the, the progress that football players or that athletes make throughout their careers, uh, they're probably in high school unless they're playing at a very high level, they're probably one of the best players on their team. And then they go to college and suddenly they're not the best player on their team. They're just a player on a team and they have to make that adjustment. And when he says they don't know what it requires, the dedication, I mean, my God, I wouldn't have been anywhere close to that dedication. I, I think the only thing I was dedicated at age 18, 19 was drinking beer and yelling at people. If you can imagine that, but you know, the whole concept that the older players, when they know how to win, teach the younger players or the less experienced players, you know, what needs to happen here for you to be successful. And that was especially true in the Osborne era when they had so many good players. But then you look at the college level, you know, college level where, oh, I'm one of the better players at college. And then you go to the NFL and it's just another step. And it's a whole new learning for, for these guys because they look at it and they go, I'm just another player on a team. So that experience quote always stood out to me. Milt Taniper passed away in 2016 from leukemia, so he's no longer with us. I think he left an incredible legacy behind uh, with the players that, you know, it's a Husker family that loved him and, and he provided a mentorship to them that was just phenomenal. I'm going to leave you with one more quote, and it's actually not in this book, but it's in another book I'm going to talk about later. It's, it's in Nebraska, Anatomy of an Era, Volume 1 by Paul Koch. And in it, Milt Tenniper says of his offense on the line, they were aggressive football players and our whole offense was built around them. We were a physical football team and that all started with the kids up front. They took challenge to that and it was important to them to let the other guys get out there in the fourth quarter. And that was what we do. And you guys can take from that quote, you know, what you want. But, um, uh, Milk Tenipers, the assembly line, it's out of print. It's really hard to find. I think you can buy it on Amazon for like $130. Mine is autographed and, and very special to me. And that's it for now. Please subscribe to my channel. And uh, I'll try to do more videos. Thank you.